Welcome to Free Thought Matters. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I'm Dan Barker. We're co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces this TV program. Today, our very special guest will be cartoonist, political commentator, and caricaturist, Edward Sorrell, who will talk about his 90 plus years as an artist and show many of his famous drawings. The Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces Free Thought Matters, is the nation's largest association of free thinkers, that's atheists, agnostics, and other non-believers. We invite you to join us in our vital work to keep our secular government free from religious influence. Become a member at ffrf.org or ask for a complimentary copy of our newspaper, Free Thought Today. Freedom depends on free thinkers. Watch prior episodes of Free Thought Matters on FFRF's YouTube channel. Edward Sorrell charts his remarkable life and artwork in his new memoir, Profusely Illustrated. His art appears in magazines, including The New Yorker, for which he's drawn numerous covers, The Atlantic, Vanity Fair, The Nation, in newspapers such as The New York Times, and even in our newspaper, FFRF's newspaper, Free Thought Today. Ed's artwork has appeared in murals, cartoons, and comic strips. Ed Sorrell has many previous books, including Mary Astor's Purple Diary, Unauthorized Portraits, and Making the World Safe for Hypocrisy. We're proud that Ed Sorrell is an honorary director of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ed, and for sharing your art, which lampoons American cultural and political life and religion. Great to be here. So the last time we saw you in person, was more than 20 years ago when we were all very young. It's so nice to see you again and nice to know that you're still very active. Yeah, <laughs> still pushing a pen. Yes, you are. Now, Ed, you have an author's note in this beautiful new book of yours, profusely illustrated, uh, that explains your book. Uh, and it says it has two purposes. Do you want to explain what those purposes are? Well, well, the first purpose is a, a totally selfish one to show off all the work I've done in the last 80 years. But, but the other purpose was to uh, was to tell how we ended up with a thug in the White House, and um, and I felt the way to do that was to was to do to tell about the presidents that followed Roosevelt. So to tell about the last 13 presidents that we've managed to live through, because so, I felt that all of them in their own way had prepared us for Donald Trump. Uh, so one of my very favorites of your drawings is the frontispiece, which uh, we're going to show. It shows the political figures that you spent your life lampooning turning the tables on you. you. You must have had great fun drawing this. <laughs> I did. I did, and I didn't, uh, I didn't spare myself. Uh, <clears throat> I, um, I showed myself as, as my pot-bellied self, huh. and, um, and they were all there drawing me accurately. Getting revenge, <laughs> huh? <laughs> yes. Well, your memoir, your book is amazing. It's a lot of fun. And in the book, you talk about your own life and you show how your own life is in a parallel trajectory with the last 12 presidents, as you point out. You've lived through a lot of history. Um, do you mind telling us your age? You've been drawing for 80 years, you say? Well, close to it. 
I'm, I'm 93. Nine. And uh, I, I'm still, I, I still have a, still drawing, still, still looking for the few magazines that are left and the even fewer newspapers. Yeah. Uh, and this is not a good time for print, but, uh, but I still manage to find homes, various yes, you, places. Yes, you do. What we'd like to show as many of your caricatures and drawings as we can squeeze in, but I do first have to ask, it must be tremendously satisfying to be a satiric artist. It, it's, it's nice. It's nice to get paid for making pictures. Yes, <laughs> I can't think of any better way of getting through life than draw, doing what I want to do and getting paid for it. But it is rather <clears throat> sad that print is having such a hard time of it now. Well, we have a newspaper in print, and we see your board there behind you, so maybe we can get a picture or two for Free Thought today. Oh, well, you certainly can. So your book, it's called Profusely Illustrated, does an impressive job of reminding us of the history leading up to Trump, as you said. And, and we'll get to some of that. But first, in deference to our audience, our audience is an irreverent audience, as you know, uh, we want to start with some of our favorites of your artwork about religion. Here's one called The Last Flossing. Well, th this is just sheer fun. Huh. Uh, there's no real point to it except that, uh, <clears throat> except that I can't imagine this having happened at my, my Passover. Huh. Uh, um, but... Uh, and I, it was just sheer folly for me to imagine it, ha it happening at Jesus's Passover, mm -hmm. but uh, it was great fun drawing it. So have you gotten any pushback from pictures like this? The only uh, pushback I ever got was uh, when I did, I had a, a regular feature in the Nation magazine, and I would occasionally take off on, on some politician. And I and I did a I did a cartoon about Mayor Koch, in which I made his nose a little larger than it was, and the mail that came in from offended Jews promising to cancel their subscription uh, <clears throat> was um, was a big uh, was a big thing, but uh, outside of that. Nobody seemed to care. Oh, there was one. There was one. One angry letter to the New Yorker. I did a cartoon, <clears throat> which perhaps you'll show. It was about animals in the subway, and <clears throat> and all of the all of the passengers in the subway were animals, and one of the animals was a bison. I, I and he was wearing the costume of an Orthodox Jew. And uh, I chose a bison because the bison has a beard, and uh, and so some some professional Jew wrote a letter in uh, complaining that that all the others are undefined by their religion, but this was was and he took great offense because the bison had horns, and I was fomenting the, uh, the old belief that Jews had horns. And Ed, you, you were raised in a Jewish family, not, yes, not I, very I, religious. I was, yes, I, <clears throat> I was raised as, as a Jew, but uh, most of my cartoons are about the Christian church. Uh, but I, I'm uh, an ecumenical as far as attacking religion. Hmm. I'll, I'll attack any any religion. Equal and, opportunity. And that leads yeah. us to this drawing where you show the creator God is turning off the light, which yes. I think is very funny. What, what What's going on here? Well, what's going on there when New York City had a blackout and Consolidated Edison decided, uh, was called on the, park, uh, on the carpet for being responsible for this blackout, but the head of Con Edison, who was a guy named Luce, uh, said uh, that it wasn't his fault, it was an act of God. 
So I decided to show God shutting off the light. Huh, that is funny. Uh, we like a lot of your cartoons dealing with religion and God. And uh, one of our all-time favorites, it's called, you call it the Ten Commandments, which you actually gifted to our office. We have a poster-sized version of this, which is framed and hanging on the wall. And visitors who tour our building, they laugh out loud when they see it. Indeed. Well, I'm glad that they enjoy it, too. I enjoyed doing it. It actually appeared in, in the nation for the first time. It was fun doing yeah, it. Yeah, well, it really says it. <laughs> yes. The obedience in the Ten Commandments. Heal, yeah. sick em, come, paw. <laughs> yeah. So what's the story behind this gag cartoon that it says about Jesus? Sure, he was a great teacher, oh, but he, he was, didn't publish. He didn't publish. Well, it was... It was going around at the time. I think this was done in the 60s. And uh, the, a, lot of, a lot of the teachers at colleges were being fired because uh, even though they were good teachers, they didn't publish. So, uh, it, so it occurred to me to, uh, to do this cartoon about Jesus who also didn't publish. Publish or perish. Well, there's a point there because all we know about Jesus, if he existed, he may or may not have, but all we know is secondhand, thirdhand writing. He never wrote anything himself. No, no, it's all secondhand and it's all questionable, but uh, that's no never mind to <laughs> believers. So now here's uh, one of your most powerful drawings. It's a quote from Cardinal Francis Spellman that says, In religion alone lies the hope for lasting peace. <laughs> yes, and I chose to show how, how, much, um, how much lasting peace there is. Yes, what a, well, a picture's worth a thousand person. words. Hmm. Yeah. And, and so uh, for a little uh, comic relief, we have a poster you did. I think it says, pass the Lord and praise the ammunition. That was done at the height of the Vietnam War. <clears throat> and uh, Spellman and later on his successor, Cardinal Cook, had gone to Vietnam and told the soldiers there that they were friends of Christ because they were there. I, 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 my picture said what I was thinking. Yes. Well, the same thing's happening right now in Ukraine. The head of the Orthodox Church in Russia is blessing the Russian troops as they go in there and murder yeah. people. So. so you've done a lot of full-page panel cartoons, and we, we only have time to show one, but this one is a very powerful example from The Nation magazine. And I think, Dan, you can read the panels as we show them, as we close up on them. Dan, would you mind reading it? All right, I'll read it. Uh, the first one says... When we bombed black churches, they called us racists. When we set fire to synagogues, they called us neo-Nazis. When we bombed the Cuban mission, they called us terrorists. Thank God we joined the Right to Life movement. They showed us the error of our ways. Now, we bomb birth control centers and abortion clinics, and we're called deeply religious. Very That's powerful. That's a much better reading than I ever did. Huh. So, so still, that, that was done years ago, but still so timely. Yes, it's, uh, regrettably, it's still timely, yes. yes. Well, we're speaking with the profusely talented, profusely irreverent, Ed Sorrell about his new memoir, Profusely Illustrated. And when we come back, Ed, you want to take a look at your commentary on politics and presidents, among other things. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist. When I first recorded that commercial back in 2014, being openly atheist in America was still fairly uncommon. Today, the fastest growing religious group in the country is the non-religious, especially among the young. That progress is heartening, but the religious pushback is fierce and the forces of Christian nationalism are well organized. Our progress won't continue unless we work together so that reason and our secular constitution will prevail.
That's why I'm asking you to join the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founders intended. Please join the Freedom From Religion Foundation today. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. My name's Jarvis and I'm an out of the closet atheist. There are many reasons why I'm an atheist, but I'll start with the crudest explanation. I'm sure many of you have seen Clash of the Titans or The Immortals or 300, these blockbuster films about ancient Greek or Roman religion, which we now call mythology. But back then it wasn't mythology. It was very real for them. They genuinely believed that you had to put a coin in a person's mouth before they were buried so that they could pay for the literal ferry to the afterlife. Just as many people today believe that they should eat crackers and wine on a Sunday or that God wants women to hide their bodies under black burqas. Every religion that has ever existed, and there are many, have all believed that they were right, that their rituals and rules and beliefs were 100% correct. And they all thought they nailed it. But where are they today? Uh, if they're not completely forgotten, they're on the silver screen, amusing us with their sword fights, animal sacrifices, and oracles. The religions of today are the entertainment of tomorrow. Everyone, I hope, is an atheist about Zeus and Apollo, Juno and Poseidon. I just added Jesus and Muhammad to that list. We're speaking with artist Ed Sorrell about his new memoir, Profusely Illustrated. Now that we have lampooned religion, let's get a taste of your artistic commentary on politics and some of the last dozen or so presidents. And I thought we should start with this called The Descent of Man. What's going on here, Ed? What's going on is that after Roosevelt died, we kept going down the evolutionary scale starting with the monkeys, Truman and Eisenhower. Uh, Eisenhower was so enamored with, with Billy Graham that he decided to put, uh, put uh, in God we trust on all our currency. And then we come to the reptiles of uh, <laughs> yeah. Nixon and Johnson and Ford and, and Reagan. And we ended up with the lowest forms of, of all, and uh, ending with Clinton as the jellyfish. <laughs> this was done at the time he was president. And um, Was that a cover? No, that was, uh, it was a poster, actually. Uh -huh. uh, it, it appeared on the cover of The Nation, and then it was turned into a poster. So there's so many wonderful uh, cartoons and caricatures, and we are just only have time to show a few, but you have a lot with Billy Graham and presidents. But here's one of your takes on President Nixon that is a classic showing him as the imperial president. And that says, yes, uh, that, that says that was Milhouse. Bill, yes, yes. Uh, Milhouse the first lord of San Clemente, Duke of Key Biscayne, and captain of Watergate. Uh, <laughs> It was uh, it was done for Rolling Stone, and it was bought by the uh, by the Library of Congress. Wow! So wow. it was part of their their collection. It might be on the wall at the uh, Nixon Memorial. Who knows? <laughs> no, I doubt <laughs> I doubt that. So you don't let anybody off the hook, not the presidents or their advisors. Let's take a look at this commentary on bellicose presidents. In case you can't recognize some of them, it's Nixon, Reagan, Edward Meese, his attorney general, and Gorbachev, Johnson, Kissinger, and Bush the first. Uh. Uh, and uh, all of them very, very proud of their missiles and everyone trying to have a bigger one than the next guy. Uh. Yes. And, and your book is, I mean, it's mostly profusely illustrated, but you go into a great deal of history on basically what considered to be the war crimes of many of these presidents. So people need to get the book and read it. But let's go on to Ronald Reagan. And this is such a clever caricature of, of yes. Robin Hood. There he is as Robin Hood shaking down the poor and giving to the rich. He was always worried that the rich weren't getting rich enough. 
Are you saying robbing or robin? <laughs> <laughs> it's well. <laughs> that I hadn't thought of that, but yes, it's, Robin Hood would have been perfectly appropriate. With that trickle-down economics. So your yes. work is always, you're always invoking history in your art, and of course the art is amazing, but tell us more about this painting. Here's Clinton. The, the funny thing about that is, is not political. It's the fact that everybody is, knows about the New Yorker checkers being such ticklers for accuracy, and when I drew it, I had Theodore Roosevelt looking at his wristwatch, and they said, well, men didn't wear wristwatches at the time of Roosevelt. And of course, they were partially right. They didn't, men didn't start wearing wristwatches until after the First World War, when they needed them to count the seconds before they threw hand grenades. Uh, but I made the change. So all, and all those beautiful caricatures of all the prior presidents, um, it's yeah. amazing. So we all remember how George W. Bush went on his crusade after 9-11, and you depict that here. Yes, there's, there's uh, Hussein at the bottom being tied, and, uh, and there are all his aides. Some of them I can't even remember anymore, but there is uh, Cheney. behind Bush, the warrior that we can see, Colin Powell and, and Condoleezza, Rice and uh, all the others. It was uh, one of the most unnecessary wars that America ever got itself into. Yes, it was. So here's a cartoon that looks, you know, we think rather Goya-esque with Cheney and Condoleezza and Bush. Bush is a doll. Bush is a little doll. <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't mean him to be a doll. I meant him to be the infant Huh. the idiot infant of the royal family. Cheney was the real king at, during that administration. But Condoleezza, well, Condoleezza was Condoleezza. Mm -hmm. I, I love how you then depict Obama and how he was treated by his opponents. You have him uh, portrayed as Gulliver, all tied up. Yes, all tied up by, <clears throat> by Fox News. And we can spot some of them. There was Sarah Palin in the bottom left. and But fortunately, we're able to forget them and their yes. names. <laughs> Isn't that nice? After a time. And then finally, you have this piece on Trump that truly catches his malevolence. Oh. Yes. The, I, I was never able to find anything funny about Trump. But I was able to do this because... I did him as Medusa, and the snakes were the various things that he got caught on. The fact of uh, putting fake real estate on his properties and, uh, and his lawsuits and his not paying his contractors and all the other things that he is famous for. Was it deliberate or was it a coincidence that the word Medusa ends with the letters U-S-A? <laughs> hey, I, I had never noticed that. Ah. <laughs> so we're running out of time. I think we're just going to try to go through some of your other uh, caricatures really fast. Um, you were really um, caught Frank Sinatra, and this is quite a caricature of all of the gladhanders huh. that you did. Yes, I, I was very lucky because if, if Sinatra refused to pose for this. Most of the Esquire covers of that period were, done, were photographs, but since he refused to to pose for this, they let me draw it. Is that his picture behind you on the wall there? Yes, that is. Uh, that was the drawing that I did for Esquire, and uh, uh. it was uh, it was an overnight drawing because uh. the first one I did didn't work out and wow. it was rejected. You pulled an all nighter, huh? Yeah. So I'm fascinated by your murals in New York City, and we just have a couple minutes left, but let's try to show some of these. This is the Casablanca, and lots yeah. of actors, and then there are figures from New York City, famous people. In the middle there is Margaret Sanger. Um, yeah. Margaret Sanger is, is trying to pass along her birth control pamphlets to uh, to one who who wasn't going to need them. Huh. And I think we have uh, some more. Uh, there's Fran Lebowitz, and I think another mural picture coming up. Um, 
there are Fats Waller, Frank Sinatra, lots of New York celebrities. My favorite was uh, Peter Arno was in the corner. Where where is where are these murals? Are they up in restaurants or? Yes, oh. that's the it's in the Waverly Inn restaurant, which is in the Greenwich Village. The the other mural is in the Monkey Bar, which is still closed because of the pandemic. And I think we have time for just a few of your gag cartoons. Um, we have a favorite of ours in which you depict the Supreme Court in 1998 trying to figure out whether oral sex constitutes a sexual relationship. And let's take a minute to absorb this scenario huh. of all yes. of these people pondering this. It, very, it was a very difficult decision. Yes. It was all, It was done during the Clinton scandal with Monica Lewinsky. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it then, was. that's one of my favorite cartoons. And then this is just a gag cartoon that just makes me laugh. Um, it says, it's the Titanic. It's probably for the best. The meals were awfully rich. <laughs> just yeah. funny. And then here's one on religion uh, that shows the Orthodox, Conservative, and Reformed Jews. And I love how you have the Reformed Jew is depicted as Santa. <laughs> yes, it will. it's because many Jews celebrate Christmas now as well as Hanukkah. And then we have a final cartoon So you're here. 93 years old. You've got another decade or so ahead of you. But uh, this last cartoon shows you looking at death. And, and what do you say there? Uh, I say, but I only have two more to do before I'm finished. <laughs> I was feeling that when I was doing my book on Mary Astor. I felt death wanting me to retire. Well, you must be doing something right because you're staying alive and, and productive and funny as always. Well, we know you don't believe in an afterlife, but you have certainly left, uh, you'll have your immortality with all of these wonderful cartoons and caricatures. At How kind of you to say that. Thank well, you so much. And thanks for being with us today. And thank you so much for watching Free Thought Matters. Because free thought matters. Hi, I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason.